Hello and welcome back. Today's video is one that I think a lot of people are going to be kind of excited about, especially people who follow me on Bookstagram, uh, because I'm going to be talking about floating bookshelves. People ask me how I did my bookshelves, and part of the reason they ask me about that is there are so many options on the internet about how do you make floating bookshelves. So when I initially got my shelves about a year ago now, I did several days of research into different shelf methods before I got the ones that I have now. When you get floating shelves, there's two big options. There's the DIY option and there's the pre-made option. Personally, the option that I chose is to buy pre-made bookshelves, and I'm going to explain to you why I did that. The main DIY option for floating bookshelves is to take something similar to this. It's called an L bracket because it's shaped like an L. And then you take your book and you permanently attach it to the L bracket. So usually some people hook it here and some people hook it here. When you hook it outside the book, if you were to use two L brackets, you could get away with not permanently damaging your book. But you can't use just one because it'll fall. And this is not the kind of L bracket that you would use. You'd use a much bigger one. This is just the only L bracket I had on hand to show you this. But another issue with doing it like this, even if you had an L bracket here and one here, the issue is you're going to be able to see it on the bottom of your shelf. So what a lot of people who make their own do is you open your book, insert your bracket here, and you either screw into these holes or you use a strong glue and you glue it. I wanted to be able to take my books down and put them back up. I didn't want to have to damage my books. So that's why I chose not to go with a DIY option. So these are the shelves that I ended up buying. These are the same as the ones that I have on the wall behind me. They are from Amazon. I believe they were $23 for a set of four, which by the time you buy your glue and your shelf brackets and everything else that you're gonna need, is pretty much the same price. Unless you happen to have a ton of really nice L brackets laying around. Even as somebody who works in a hardware store who could get L brackets at a discount, this is a better price. <laughs> Trust me. Here is what the shelves look like. Right here you've got four holes. Those go into the wall. And this is the bottom. See this lip right here? This lip solves your problem of holding the book closed. Because the book sits right like this. You slide this cover into that lip. And then the pages sit on this part. So you barely see it when it's on the wall. If you look right here, you can see a little bit of this one on my Witchlands stack, only because the Witchlands stacks are above eye le level. Any books that are below eye level, like the Wicked King set, you don't see it at all. So that's why I like So our next step is what supplies do you need to put up your shelves? When you buy the shelves on Amazon, it comes with four shelves, and I believe I've already said I'll link them down below. It comes with four shelves, a set of instructions that basically tell you what I just told you, and then it also comes with these. These are called wall anchors. The reason you need wall anchors is walls are made out of pl um, plaster, basically. So they're not really strong enough to hold a lot of weight. So when you're putting something with a lot of weight in your wall, you have two options. Your first option is to go into an anchor board because behind the plaster there are two befores. So option number one is, which I will show you, locate an anchor board, drill directly into that. Option number two is to use wall anchors. The way wall anchors work, you drill a hole in your wall, 
you insert this. Now that I'm screwing this in, see how it gets wider as the nail travels down it? That's going to expand behind your wall and stop this from coming back out. So that is option number two. Now there's a lot of different styles of wall anchor. Personally, these are the ones that came with the shelves. These are not the ones that I'm going to be using. The ones that I'm going to be using are just a little bit fancier than these and I just trust them a little bit more. Why do I trust them a little bit more? I asked my manager at work and he said, these are the ones you want. And so I said, okay, that's what I'm buying. So the ones that I bought are these. Now, if you read the uh, reviews on Amazon, there are people who use that style wall anchor and did fine. But as for me personally, um, this style, each nail will hold about five pounds. This style, each nail will hold about 10 pounds. Since books are heavy and I like to make big stacks, at one point, this, no, that shelf at one point had the entire Throne of Glass hardcover set on it. So that tells you how much weight you can put on these. What's nice about this style wall anchor is you don't have to pre-drill a hole. You just take this pointy part, put it up against the wall, and hammer it until only that's sticking out, and then you just screw until it's flat against the wall, and then you do just like what you did before. You put your screw in and screw it. So that's your screw options. So I mentioned earlier that you can go into wall anchors. These shelves are too wide to get all of your, uh, all four of your nails into a wall anchor. So what I did was I did two on each shelf. I'll show this. Wall, here's a hole, here's a hole. On this one, these two are in a wall anchor. On this one up here, these two are. So if you want to go into a wall anchor, you just need this handy dandy thing. It's called a stud finder. And where it beeps, it found a stud. My tripod is sitting on a table and the cat just jumped on the table that the tripod's on. Hopefully she doesn't knock it over. So that's the basics of that. Now I want to plan out where I want my shelves. And I have, it's actually cardstock, but that's just because I had cardstock handy. You can use any paper. And then you're going to want either some putty or some tape. And literally what you are doing is just sticking this to the wall to plan where you want it to end up. And before I really plan out where I want everything, I'm just gonna locate my studs real quick and mark them with a pencil. All right, have my studs. So now, like I said, I'm just gonna figure out where I want stuff hung. You're also gonna need a step stool. If you notice, I just got taller all of a sudden. That's because I have a step stool sitting right there. Or maybe you're like my manager and you're seven and a half feet tall. <laughs> he wouldn't need a step stool. I ended up deciding that it's gonna be a lot easier to visualize what I'm doing if I take the books off the shelves that I already have so I have a better idea just of where everything is. I'm just tracing this onto the sheet so I have just a visualization. I like having them semi-randomly staggered, so this is what I'm looking at right now. Now, as you can tell by the fact that there is a pillow right there, this is where my bed is, so I just want to make sure I'm not going to be hitting my head on anything if I sit up in bed. I think this is a little bit closer to my head than I necessarily want it, so I think I'm going to shift it up just a little. I don't know, that's not too bad. I feel like that could work, because this is me perched on the very edge of my bed. And it is still higher than my shelf right there, so we're going to go with it, I think. And if I were to have literally one more shelf, I would probably put it like right there. Or maybe I'll move him over and like put an art print there. This is why you figure out where you want things before you start banging holes in the wall. So if you read the reviews on Amazon, one thing that a lot of people say is you have to make sure this ends up perfectly flat. Because if it's not perfectly flat and it's at all sideways, it's going to show and your books are maybe going to slide if it's too far sideways. So you have to make sure it's really flat. And the way to make sure it's really flat is to use a level. I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail, but basically there's a bubble here and you just track the bubble and when the bubble's in the middle, that means it's flat. This one with the uh, Stocking Jack the Ripper books is not actually hooked into an anchor. That's what I was just looking at. I was trying to figure out how that lined up with an anchor. So he's not hooked into an anchor and he does just fine. Now that I've picked where I want the things to be, I'm going to put this in the wall once it's level and I'm going to mark where everything goes. Easy peasy. And then now that my stuff is on the wall, I'm just going to double check that all the screws are all the way in and then I'm going to start putting up books. So one other option that's kind of fun is you can actually put boxes up on the wall this way. 
you just use this bottom flap right there and slide it that way and it looks really nice but boxes if they're empty are actually light enough that I have hooked boxes to the wall using this putty so you can do it that way but you don't have to it just kind of looks nice especially if you have cute boxes or you could even put a box and do it like that but in this case the box doesn't really seem sturdy so maybe I don't recommend this all right and that's pretty much the gist of it I'm gonna finish putting up the last of my little dragons that uh, I took down at the beginning of the video these are also from Amazon so I'll also link to them down below and in terms of decoration you can see I just stacked stuff on each one that fits that series so I'll show you real quick what's on what right here is the Wicked King this is my little berry bubblegum machine that I made this is my Jude Funko that I made and Fay Crates Cardan this is Pusheen dressed as Sherlock because I'm waiting for the Thomas Cresswell plushie from Fay Crate that will come out in their um, Capturing the Devil box. Here, this is a Fay Crate art print by Gabriella, whose name I can't pronounce and so I won't try. Um, this is actually Christmas decor, but it kind of looks like the Lord of the North. Aiden from Blood Witch, uh, Fay Crate plushie. Over there, I wonder if my rice ant plushie would fit. He doesn't fit. All right, so I switched so the Marvel stuff is over here and it's got Hella and Valkyrie Funkos. Aiden again. Uh, this is Finale with the little Finale bubblegum machine that I made. Here's where I put that. He's from Shelf Love. The print is from Fay Crate. Moving down, uh, this is Aragon. I actually have two copies of Aragon because I have a collector's edition and then I have the regular one. Aragon Funko that I made. Toothless. And then just a dragon art print because it seemed fitting. So, the Jude Funko and the Aragon Funko both have tutorials on my blog and I will also link them down below. So that is all of that. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.